What's up, everybody? Welcome to Gojo with Mike Gold Jr. That is me. With me, as always, on a Wilder Wednesday, super producer extraordinaire Brandon Newman and our dear friend Charlotte Wilder. Friends, how we doing? Good. It's a, yeah, it was a game of chicken. It was a game of chicken. Ah. Oh, wow. And Charlotte, you were the winner. I not to break, but we broke at the same time, Brandon. Anyway, I'm thrilled to be here. Love seeing your beautiful faces on this uh, beautiful Wednesday. I have, Positive uh... vibes only. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> oh. You know what? I like that, that attitude exhausting. being brought on a Wednesday. We kind of need that right. I will say I was in the middle of workshopping this, so I wanted to run it by you guys because we are in okay. Wednesday of the start of Lent for the Catholic calendar. And I think a lot of people in general, because of Mardi Gras, familiar with the concept of Fat Tuesday that we had yesterday, which is supposed Mm -hmm. to be that last splurge day before people get started on their Lenten journey leading up to Easter Sunday. I said, I feel like we need to expand Fat Tuesday's empire a little bit. Because... I just came off of punishing myself at the Super Bowl for a week with food and alcohol. I have no plans to observe Lent whatsoever. And yet I still, on Tuesday, found myself out and about deciding I was going to go treat myself to a little bit of ice cream. And so I'm workshopping these. Tell me what you guys think of the entire, I'm going to call it girth week. You start off. (laughs) Okay. You start off. I want to make sure I've got this right. Beef Monday. Then Mm -hmm. you've got Fat Tuesday. Then you've got Thick Wednesday. Then you've got Double Cheeked Up Thursday, followed Mm. by Cake Friday. And thus you have Girth Week. I have one uh, edit, if I may. Be so bold. What what was was Thursday? Thursday was Double double Cheeked Up Thursday, a play on the... It's got to be Double Cheeked Up Wednesday, Thick Thursday. Mm. Ooh. See, there's, you know what? Or is that's that a, a problem? So I was trying to like play that. off. There's a meme double cheeked up on a casual Thursday that I was kind of oh. leaning into, but I do like alliteration. I'm a sucker for it. I'm a sports talk radio guy at my core. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I, I sometimes I feel like for someone who has made a career on the internet, I'm very bad at it. Oh, no, I don't 100%. think that's anything to be upset about either. Like being bad at the internet is a good thing. I've tried. I've I've tried to get better at being bad at it. If that makes sense, that's healthy. Well, no, that doesn't make sense to me. Say that. Say say more. Uh, you know how you have those friends who you'll be like, they'll send you a meme that you saw like a year ago, and yes. you have to be oh, the asshole yes. who's always like, "Oh yeah, I saw that." And like, if you do what we do, you are always that person. You are always yeah. a person being like, "Ha ha, yeah," you know. And like, you don't you don't want to. You don't want to give them the satisfaction of letting them think that you hadn't seen it, but you also feel like a real dick being like, I need to let you know I saw it. So I'm trying to be better about like just not always being online so that I haven't seen everything. You're you're in the the wrong company with uh, Michael Jr. over there. Yeah, I know, which is why I rely on Mike to like this is. Also, like, for my job, I need to see the sports stuff, so I sort of have to be online. But sometimes I, like, still manage to miss things, and it feels like a win. I've been trying to do that myself, Charlotte, and failing. I haven't been doing it very well, but I've been trying to make sure, like, I'm reading a little bit every day, and I'm watching film getting ready for the draft every day. I also, though, just had the realization that everything you just described, that's like personal growth. And I didn't anticipate personal growth looking the way it did for me at 33 years old. I had that realization the other morning when I went and on a whim, because The Last of Us on HBO has been so good, bought a PlayStation 5. I haven't owned a video game console since I was 26. And now I'm a 33-year-old man that just got back into playing video games while simultaneously waking up and realizing that I have now been wearing a night guard at night for so long and so dutifully that I actually had a dream last night where in the dream, before I talked to someone, I had to take out the night guard that I was wearing in the dream, and then I put it back in when I was done speaking. <laughs> oh my as, as, a fellow, as a fellow night guard wearer, I, I, think, <laughs> I, think I've, I think I've slept with a night guard for like, eight years now like i'm basically like you know some athletes does it it stop people from taking your teeth 
it stops you like i grind my teeth so bad that i yeah it's well it stops a tooth fairy from getting like if she gets lost and shows up at your house by accident like she can't take one could you imagine um, how horrifying that would be by the way if you woke up as an adult <laughs> and the tooth fairy was just strung out trying to rip one of your teeth out of your mouth with a wrench all, all, all I was going to say, Mike, is I've had I have dreams that have incorporated the mouth guard. Like I think I'm eating a piece of steak, but I, it's just my mouth guard. So I really relate deeply to that. And I also didn't mean to take the attention away from um, Girth Week because I think that deserves <laughs> no, no, more no, no, applause. No, no. no, no we're listen. in dream time now. <laughs> Yeah, it, it has to happen sometimes. Mouthguard Hive, stand up at Gojo Show on Twitter. If you are also a proud member of the people that have ground their teeth down into nothing so much. You know things are going sideways when the <laughs> dentist tries to ask you. Because normally you walk into the dentist with a certain amount of questions you're prepared to ask. You got to tell the lie about flossing and how often you mm -hmm. floss when prompted on that. I was not ready for the curveball this most recent visit of, so are you stressed out a lot currently? Oh, ooh, ooh. And that is a segue into, brother, <laughs> your canines ain't nining anymore. They're just cane. Like, you have ground <laughs> those things down into just wow. nice, smooth tips. I wasn't ready to be attacked like that in the dentist chair. And that's saying no. something. No. No, no, no. That's a that's a different kind of doctor. Ask that question. That the dentist's job is to make you like. I go to the, sometimes. I get so stressed, guys. I'm a. I, this is going to reveal. I feel like I come on this podcast and I just say like the weirdest shit about myself. I'm like I love huge Welcome planes. To the club. And sometimes I get so anxious about my teeth falling out that I go to the dentist just to reassure myself they're good. That they're not going <laughs> to like fall out of your mouth while you're talking. I, I don't know. I don't know, Brandon. I just sometimes I have teeth stress dreams and then I convince myself that like they've gotten teeth all messed stress? up and I make a dentist appointment so that they can tell me they're fine. And then last time I did that, I go in and she's like, you really need Invisalign. And I was like, I did not. But there's a happy ending to this. I feel really nuts. <laughs> I feel really nuts right now. But I have a special... Um, mouth guard doctor like my jaw is so bad that i go to a jaw specialist and he makes these like reinforced mouth guards and i went in and i was like my dentist told me i needed invisalign and he was like that's bullshit your teeth are great she's trying to upsell you and i was like wow. so now i'm very skeptical of dentists and i no longer make mental health dentist appointments you have ah! a don you <sighs> See, that's really adulthood is learning how deep the medical rabbit hole goes, how many different specialties you are, because mm -hmm. you're going through the base layer stuff when you're a kid. It's like in Forgetting Sarah Marshall when he goes to see his doctor and he's like, this is a fucking pediatrician's office. Have you noticed that you're sitting on top of a toy car? That's the stuff you graduate from into the real doctors that are going to start to prey on all your worst fears. That's, you know what, honestly, lucky you to have a doctor that was honest enough and up on game to be like, no, 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 I'm not going to let them treat you like the people at the auto mechanics office. Yes, I was set Dr. Nojan Bakhtiari in yeah. Manhattan if anybody needs someone. But doesn't doesn't the price just offset itself because you're paying your grind specialist to to to, to do not, their thing? Not as much, not as much as Invisalign, not okay, as much as okay, Invisalign. Okay, that's fair. I, wait a minute, can I say? But that yes, this I, podcast, wait, I love the idea of a ahead. grind specialist. That sounds like the grind set TikTok guys <laughs> that try and tell you to wake up at five a.m. every day. <laughs> well, I, I was going to say at thirty, at you know our ripe old ages, uh, yeah. plus thirty three or plus thirties. Girth week just turned to grind week. And they're like, this is this is where we live right now. Like and, wow. and speaking of grind week, while we're sharing things that we'll regret later on. <laughs> and speaking of dreams, I've been having a lot of Last of Us dreams that that are not comfortable. <laughs> Brandon, <slapping>. I <laughs> swear to God. Let me finish, Mike. Let me finish. <laughs> and I was having a dream oh where <laughs> I'm nervous. You're laughing too hard. <laughs> Mike, because Mike is being stupid. Let me do my thing, Mike. I was having a dream where I was. <laughs> <laughs> I got to mute Mike's computer. I was having a dream where I was grinding up on somebody. <laughs> Just like, you know, a normal, <laughs> regular dream. 
that involves something like that. Like it was like you know back in my high school days, and like like literally was like sneaking out of houses and like very uh, elementary school stuff. And then there was a zombie apocalypse. And then my son Carter found me in the bushes hiding, and I was like, Carter, what are you doing here? Like I'm over here at this girl's house. And this <laughs> this is this is why my. <laughs> was hiding his face because I told him that I had a dream recently that was zombie apocalypse inspired that involved grinding as well as my son. Oh. <laughs> as soon as you started that story, I, I honestly, I was just thankful we didn't get to like something because it's zombie related that was going to technically be necrophilia. Like I'm really <laughs> glad that we stopped where we did. But I knew as soon as he started the story that Brandon was about to be horny on Maine in the name of zombies. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> oh, man. Look, this is a fair. safe space, right? Nobody else Thank hears you. what the three of us say. <laughs> right. It's Wilder Wednesdays. Well, it sure is. It at, sure freaking is. At Gojo Show on Twitter, if you've also had wet dreams about The Last of Us, please let Brandon <laughs> know. <laughs> Wrong with you? What's wrong with me? I didn't say nothing about being wet. I didn't say nothing about being wet. We got a great show. We got a great show for you guys today. Um, Plenty of actual sports headlines to run through. An interesting reunion of sorts going on in Detroit of all places, potentially, which I'm very excited about. The city of brotherly love actually showing a lot of brotherly love and a very important athlete archetype that I think needs to exist and I'm thankful has a modern champion. So we will get to all of that coming up here as we towel off. But um, <laughs> we were t- we've been talking a lot about the bonds of friendship on this show, and I just wanted to put this out there because yesterday the most viral clip that was going around concern the philadelphia eagles wide receiver aj brown went on the podcast the raw room Mm -hmm. shout out to darren bates and those guys have been over on there they do an awesome job on that show but they had aj brown in there and he had a clip that went very viral where he said very candidly i love philly and what i'm about to say if you do not pay this man in reference to jalen hurts just ship me off wherever he finna go listen you're talking about pressure howie get it done I pray that everyone in sports can have themselves a friend like A.J. Brown because you want to talk about people in the right places exerting their power. The guy you just traded for and gave all that money to saying publicly what I'm sure a lot of guys on that team echo about Jalen Hurts, who's already going to have an easy time with this contract negotiation, just kind of signifies the good, healthy place that the Eagles are in right now. Where Howie Roseman's probably going to hear this and go, yeah, we knew that. We expect to pay this guy because we want him to be around. Giants fans have to be really, really beside themselves with anger yet again that life is so good in Philly that this is going (laughs) to happen and everyone's going to kind of shrug their shoulders. The... I have a theory that so I think it was I think it was Tony Morrison who said that secrets are the things that ruin families or see or the the things that ruin Ooh. families are the things you cannot say or I'm butchering that and that's not fair um, to fair. one of the goats but um, I think that that also can apply to teams where if if you can say something that if the baseline like of course everybody's says stuff behind people's backs at, at times. But like if, if for the most part you can be pretty above board with, with your opinions and with what you think and what you want to the point where you can say that and the rest of the organization can be like, yeah, cool. Instead of like it fracturing everything. I think that is a really good sign. And like, we don't fully know what the reaction was when, how we heard that. But I think just the fact that AJ Brown felt comfortable or, or like, a, he exerted his power, but B, he was he was able to. I think that's I think that's remarkable. I mean, I yes, but if they needed to hear AJ Brown say that to to actually give that man money, 
other than just watching film of the foot of the Super Bowl and all the other 17 games that was played before then, like I don't know what to tell the Eagles. Like they this is just like a cherry on top of the no shit pie or whatever. Like, yes, <laughs> you have to give Jalen Jalen Hurts the arguably best best quarterback in the Super Bowl as much money as is the market desires or set the market with that man. Yeah, I don't think that there's anything new they learned, right? I think just to Charlotte's point, it's about a general comfort level that exists and also the place that they're in with their team building, right? If you use them as a foil for what's going on with the Giants right now, we talked about Daniel Jones some, but they've got the decision to make with the franchise tag between Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley. That team needs a lot of help. And they've got two weapons in the middle of their offense that are both really important in their own way that they're going to have to worry about. I think that because of the importance of positions, you franchise tag Daniel Jones if you can't get to a larger deal, and you try and come to terms on an agreement not at a market-setting value with Saquon Barkley, who's important in his role the way that offense is structured, but still plays a position that doesn't have the same cachet. They got real things to worry about over there because they're trying to set the foundation for the future. The Eagles are trying to plant their flag and keep it going. And with the investments that you've made everywhere else, rolling the dice and starting over a quarterback doesn't make a ton of sense when you've got this kind of proximity to the prize. I will tell you, though, that as someone who is very close to many Giants fans, um, it isn't great. Oh, it's man. Not, They're like, feeling watching, it? Watching, watching Philly be happy has not been easy, but it was also absolutely hilarious because a lot of Giants fans were like, ah, ugh, I like this Philly team. Ah, I hate it. Mm. I hate them. I don't want them to win. But like, it was a real tortured um, moment. For, for a second there because it's a pretty likable Philly team and that's, you know, sounds like an oxymoron, but it's more the fans, hey, I guess, but you know. Well, Jalen Hurts is a very likable quarterback. I mean, let's yeah. be real. We, we haven't really had a lot of reps hating a Philly quarterback. You know what I mean? Like they've been right. some likable characters down the line. So like we're, we're used to that, but the, the rest of the team is pretty likable. Like just the, the commitment to running the ball like it, it it serves all of the old uh you know newspaper uh nfl fans and all the social media ones as well because look at jalen hurts yeah well I, I guess that's the thing is philly recognizes that hey listen is jalen hurts a top five quarterback i would actually say if we're sober about it probably not at this point like, I think you could really? find five quarterbacks that you would reasonably take before Jalen Hurts at this point. But what Jalen Hurts did, when he did it, and his importance to that team all necessitate that he gets paid that top-end money. I'm not begrudging that. I want to see all these guys get paid absolutely as much as possible. And Jalen's got all the leverage in all the right places. That means he's going to get this number. Now, what they'll be as far as guarantees, how that's going to be structured so that Philly can try and keep some of the core of this roster intact because a lot of the sell for this Super Bowl team was, hey, look at what an absolute armored car you've built on both sides of the ball, especially along the lines of scrimmage. You want to be able to bring as much of that back as possible. You were dominant and deep in all those areas, and that's hard to keep together once you pay the quarterback. But that's why Howie and those guys get paid. But I'm just saying, like, Jalen Hurts, still, there's some things as a quarterback that we're going to continue to see him, I think, develop on the way that he's developed so far. What do you guys think the odds are that they get back to the Super Bowl next year? I mean, if you want to simplify the question to like between Kansas City and Philadelphia, who do I yeah. think's got a better chance of returning next year? It's Kansas City, overwhelmingly. Like, mm. It's their ball at this point. The same way we talked about it with Georgia and college football, it's Kansas mm -hmm. City now. They've been to the last five AFC title games and three of the last five Super Bowls. They're, they're the easy bet on that. And with Philadelphia, I could see if they've got to make some financial decisions along those lines because of the Jalen Hurt con Hurts contract, maybe – maybe things take a bit of a step back. We'll see. The rest of the NFC we know is still down, so they're going to be a playoff Thank team. You. They're going to be one of the favorites, but maybe I could see somewhere along the way if injury creeps in the way it really didn't for so many pivotal spots for them this year that maybe yeah. they have a chance to step back. Yeah, I would, I would say I can see them returning because the NFC, I don't believe in any other team, but 
with this coordinator roulette that just happened with Philly. They are, it's yeah. constantly happening with Philly. You know, there could be some some bumps and bruises along the way and maybe in pivotal times. But I just feel like there's this, forgive me for saying his name, Charlotte, Tom Brady-like resolve ah. to Jalen Hurts that yeah. I just kind of yeah. believe that he will get those men around him to this place again. I think I think that he has shown a remarkable uh, like this season was absolutely remarkable. What we saw him do, what we saw him grow into, how we saw him play in the Super Bowl, that is so rare and requires such an intense confidence that the team clearly bought into that I I I think you're right. I if if they have that glue, then maybe it makes losing some of those supporting positions um, a little bit easier to right. to work with. Yeah, I, I think you're exactly right. And I think that is a lot of the added leverage for Jalen. Mm-hmm. You have a chance to be mm-hmm. a thing. As Listen, we're going to talk Jason Kelsey, who's been one of their stalwarts on the offensive line, is a name people are wondering. Hey, might he potentially retire this offseason? Could that be one of the leaders on the team that you're moving on from here? There are other guys in certain spots pivotal on that team that are only getting older. Lane Johnson at right tackle. Fletcher Cox and Brandon Graham on the other side of the football. Round and round we go. And for to go all the way back to A.J. Brown, for him to have this kind of impression, I get as a guy who... Got a lot of great stats this year as a wide receiver, which is their love language, would feel good about this. But for him to come in after one year and say, oh, no, this is the dude. Like, he has spent one season with Jalen Hurts, not been in the building with him nearly as long as some of these other guys, and he's identified that. I'd imagine based on the character of Jalen Hurts that's been pretty publicly talked about, that might be a common sentiment inside that locker room. Totally. Brandon, you're muted. Sorry. Um, I was going to say, I just also feel like what quarterback has A.J. Brown had? You know what I mean? Like, I feel like he is is hitching his wagon near the end of his career to the best quarterback that he's seen and the one that he can see give him his ceiling. Because let's be real. I mean, that tandem is real. And there's enough great wide receivers on that team that can distract from whatever A.J. Brown does. So he's in a perfect situation. And I think he's trying to hold on to that for dear life. Also fair and also very smart and also underscores the value that Jalen Hurts has in that. Uh, I think it was Ben Volan who recently wrote, Hurts and the Eagles declined to talk about a contract extension following the Super Bowl loss, but don't be surprised if he has a new deal before the combine starts in a week and a half. Prior to the Super Bowl, the Eagles had already approached veterans about redoing deals to make space for Hurts. And all of this in the way that people talk about planning for quarterbacks is about when you know you've got the guy that you want to go to the dance with, plant your flag because it's going to help you make all the other decisions after that. The Eagles do have a bunch of decisions to make when it comes to free agents and veteran contracts. And so doing that, once you've already financially planned for your most important expense, as we get coming up on tax season, just seems like prudent financial planning at its core. It also shows your commitment to a kind of leadership if Jalen Hurts is the guy that you're going for. Like, I think there's nothing smarter a team can do than make their intentions clear because, I mean, it's not only for the public perception, but for everybody in the building, if you don't really know what's going on or you don't know what the priority is or you're not sure how something's going to shake out, like, uncertainty can can seep into the cracks really really quickly so i think you need to you need to act you need to know what you're doing you at least need to make a decision well and honestly perfect segue into the other quarterback that's names constantly in the news we saw new ravens offensive coordinator todd munkin at a press conference in baltimore being asked about The prospect of making the decision to come work at a place where the quarterback future seems a little bit uncertain. And Todd Munkin's a veteran of the college and NFL ranks, and so he said all the right things. But when he was asked about this, he's uh, about coming into this decision, leaving the back to back champs for Baltimore. In reference to DeMar, he said, sure, any player that's a part of a roster where you're going into, you have interest of what the roster is going to look like. But ultimately, I want to be someplace where there's structure, organization, great on defense from top to bottom. And everybody I talked to said, you want to be a Baltimore Raven. You want to be a part of that organization. 
but he is walking into an organization where I saw the question posed all over sports media yesterday, would Lamar Jackson play on the franchise tag? And I have a feeling the answer is overwhelmingly hell no. Like if I'm Lamar Jackson, I would never give ground on that. I would not show up for anything less than my name being signed on the dotted line for a long-term extension because what's Baltimore going to do? If they don't have him and he's on the franchise tag and like we saw with Le'Veon Bell and others, does not have to actually show up. There's not financial penalties in that situation. I'd make them feel it as long as possible. There's no advantage for you, especially now giving any indication of what you would do on the franchise tag. Also, I'm going to be honest. I don't fully understand what Munkin said there. Like, was that word salad or am I just to- like, that's those sentences don't actually like, oh, yeah. I keep rereading it being like, what, like they have no clue what's going on. It is absolutely word salad. It is turning chicken word salad into chicken <laughs> word. I'm making it out of chicken word shit because he knows, <laughs> Hey, if I got to coach this offense without Lamar Jackson, shit's not going to be yeah. nearly as fun. Like in college right. at Georgia with all that incredible talent, you can go and help elevate a player like Stetson Bennett the third, but that's not how shit works in the national football league. Right. <laughs> Although he is uh, Lamar Jackson's age. So. Also, very true. Hey, <laughs> sorry. Thank you. Thank you for mentioning <laughs> Um, I just, I don't, I actually believe the word salad. I actually believe the word salad because when it comes down to it, yes, you have your, your job is tied to the pieces that you're able to move, especially as offensive coordinator and obviously Lamar Jackson, former MVP, blah, 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 blah. But he can't control what quarterback's going to be at the helm. Like that's not his job. And he'd like to, to, to work with – don't roll your eyes, Mike. What? He'd like to work with Lamar Jackson. Brandon, I feel like this is a perfect comparison to college recruiting, right? Like, you never know what can happen when you commit to a school. But how often do kids really commit to the school versus – I want to go and play for this coach. I want to go and play for this coordinator. I want to go and play at this place that developed players at my position to play in the NFL. Like, people loved that notion for a long time that, oh, Johnny was committing to state you that's my alma mater because our traditions are great and because what we offer is different than everybody else. And it's usually not the case. Like, usually kids are committing to a coach, and that's why we've changed so many of the rules about transferring to reflect that. So it just feels like a similar sentiment here. Yes, but I think the the reality is you do want to be a Baltimore Raven as a coach. You do want to uh, be in that building and, and see what a, a franchise that's on solid ground looks like and feels like and on a day-to-day basis. Like, I don't know if Lamar Jackson is really shaking the foundation the way the media is, is made out to be. But I'll tell you one thing, just to bring it back to A.J. Brown, I wish any wide receiver would – say the things about Lamar Jackson publicly that they have said about Jalen Hurts in this way. I wish that the Ravens had a, a, a offensive weapon that was as important to them as A.J. Brown was so that those words even meant any weight at all. But unfortunately, the only person on that side of the ball that has any weight at all is Lamar Jackson. I mean, which is part of the problem, right? Which therein lies the, you know, how do you afford him and the things he needs to to be great. Yeah. Yeah. It's, that, and that's and that's why I'm not that's why I'm not that's why I'm not begging for him to stay. And like obviously yeah. I would like for him to stay cuz he's a great quarterback. I would like for him to play on a franchise tag to to go out there and prove your worth for 17 games of the season like the the full season and then, you know, talk about a, a full contracts from somebody, us or uh, excuse me, the Baltimore Ravens or another team. But yeah, I think a, a player like that who has struggled to finish the season in these last three should be talking about a franchise tag. I don't think a player that time and time again has displays the outsized importance that he has to the Ravens roster. Wins aren't a quarterback stat, but the win splits without Lamar Jackson are bad. We saw last season when you take Lamar Jackson off the field with this team, they are not nearly as good. 
you look at an MVP season, you look at what he's done at various points when the roster around him has not been able to finish the season. Go back to two years ago when halfway through that season, you had no running back room to start the season. To your point, you haven't drafted meaningful wide receiver talent that's panned out for you or acquired it in free agency that's affected that team. And he's had to shoulder that load. So I don't want to hear more about what Lamar Jackson has to do for the Baltimore Ravens. Like, the Baltimore Ravens have been in many times in many forms carried by Lamar Jackson while they piece back together the health of their offensive line or they acquire the linchpin on a defense that's now got it back in fighting form. He's earned what should be coming his way, which should be a long-term guaranteed deal. One of the high, like you want to talk about a market center, that should be a guy who's absolutely near setting the market. If we're talking about him, Jalen Hurts, Daniel Jones, and these contracts, Lamar Jackson should be the one atop the heap. I, do, I really, a year ago, I would not have seen us saying Lamar Jackson, Jalen Hurts, Daniel Jones, you know, like that's a, I'm proud of Danny Dimes. I just want to say it. I'm, he's, Brian Dable has, has worked some miracles and the fact that you just said his name in company with those two and I, and I didn't, and I was, uh, and it made sense a little bit, sort of. It is interesting to look at them kind of as a Russian nesting doll of a quarterback situation. <laughs> like the biggest and most outsized one would be Lamar Jackson. <laughs> On the inside of that, you've got Jalen Hurts that's going to get big time money come up, you know, a little more recent success wise. And then you have Daniel Jones, which similar to the conversation that we've had about Jalen Hurts incremental progress that absolutely had a lot to do with now getting in a better situation coaching wise the way that they structured that offense around him his improvement taking better care of the football being such a potent part of that ground attack but all those teams also in very different places it's just fascinating the quarterbacks that we have side by side that kind of show you how difficult team building is in the NFL and how much where you're at in the process, the Eagles coming off a Super Bowl, the Ravens being a perennial playoff team that wants to try and get further, and the Giants just now tasting some of that success this year with a roster that pales in comparison to the other two overall, how that affects the calculus of what you're willing to do at quarterback. Who is inside the Russian doll of Daniel Jones? Is it Taylor Heineke or is it Davis Mills? Ooh. <laughs> Wait, I would no, think it's, that's um, got to be if of those two, I would pick Taylor Heineke. It's okay. Same. I like, but Davis I Mills, wonder man. just like, thinking, right, like getting a little bit worse, like getting a lot bit worse. It you know, might like worst be worst team in the league. It might. I might have uh bias here. I'm, I Who's want Mac Jones? Jones. I want Mac oh Jones to fit God. in this Ooh. nesting doll somewhere. But we're not a at that point, and no. b he, he he needs you know Mac Jones needs a Jalen Hurts or Danny Dimes type of year. He does, and he's and let's another just great hope example. Brian, let's hope Bill O'Brien can give it to him. I can say he's another great example, like really good rookie year. Big step yep. back when surprise, surprise, you've got a former D coordinator and special teams coach trying to share play calling duties on offense. Who could have yeah. seen that not working? Who would have thought? <laughs> Like, wow. my, dumb ass ain't, my dumb ass didn't even think about the Alabama tie. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Damn. Yes, so, you did. I think we talked about that, Brandon. Yeah, you did. I'm going to give I you the be credit for that. Sometimes. I, I think you have been speaking of that before. <laughs> I think you have been. Mac Jones, I do like the idea that he's so small inside the Russian dolls that yeah. you can't really distinguish the things. And you're like, is this Bailey Zappi? Nesting doll, or is this Mac Jones nesting doll? They both kind of look like and stock you know Wii characters. Like, you'll never know. You will never know. They could 1,000% parent trap us in a football game. Oh, oh if you man. sent Bailey Zappi out there in a Mac Jones jersey, I'd be like, good to, good to see Mac is healthy again. We did that Mac's one. Mac's zipping it out there. Like... It's amazing for how dedicated NFL fans are, how easy I think it would be to actually make that work. My rookie year, I went to training camp with the Steelers, and when I would walk down, I was plainly wearing 
number 67. But I was as big as I had ever been. I had a big, long beard. Like the joke in the off-season program, I will never forget the feeling of pride that welled in my chest when I looked over in the weight room in Pittsburgh and veteran defensive tackle Brett Kiesel was over on the elliptical warming up, he of the greatest Pittsburgh beard fame, and just looked over at me and gave me like the knowing nod as a salute to my facial hair. Went home and called my parents. I had made it that day. Wow. I had made it that day. But fast forward to training camp, and there were legit people in Latrobe, Pennsylvania, where the Steelers go for training camp every year, who yelled Kiesel when I was walking down to practice. As if the guy wearing 99 had not been there for eons at that point and should be readily recognizable. Like People miss that stuff. I guarantee you there are fans listening to this thinking, like, no, you couldn't get me. I definitely would know if it was... If it was, you know, Gojo or Kiesel or Zappy or Jones. And you know what? I'm here to tell you, I don't think you can because maybe I just have terrible facial recognition, but like all athletes are so big and tall that, yep. that when you see them, so I feel like part, like anytime I'm around professional athletes, I am... I, I feel so tiny. I'm like, oh my God, you guys are like, you forget how big they are because you only see them on TV next to each other in proportions. You're like, oh, that is a Jalen Brown, like slim, normal looking dude. And then right. you get next to him and you're like, you are the tallest person I've ever seen in my entire life. And then there's someone taller than him. And so you get a little bit, I don't, I don't, I'm just saying, I there's think it could a, be fooled. There's not a J.J. Beret out there to set the tone, like, you know, as a controlled for us while we're watching. But also, the reason why these fans wouldn't get it is hope is a hell of a drug. And as soon as you're out there and you spend all that time to get in the place where those athletes are, you're hoping that you see someone you know. Therefore, you are yes. calling every yes. large person above your shoulders a name that you know, and that's not them. And that's what yes. I think happened to Mike. Also, in defense of football fan fans, helmet sport. Helmet sports are always tougher. Helmet. True. I will I will say, if you're looking to play a fun game, I always said that if you cut an, uh, an ex-football player especially open across the shoulders up back in the traps area, you would see their football age like tree rings because that's the area Ooh. that holds form the longest after playing. Every time I see my dad, who has lost considerable weight since his playing days, is pretty skinny now, like legitimately skinny, but is a 6'5 former defensive tackle. When I'm walking behind him and I look at the shoulder, you can still see that's the yoke of someone that used to have to do damage with their head for a living. That's where wow. your shock absorbers are. And so I think that's just something to keep an eye out. If you see your favorite football player out in public, the shoulders are going to be the giveaway more often than not. Is that your is that your trap? Yep, your trap right back here. So you're going trap like right at the top of the traps to yeah. me, and the neck is the difference. Yeah, I think my traps are getting bigger. <laughs> <I'm> working out. <laughs> Beef wilder back out yeah, here. Yeah, I, I looked in the mirror the other day and I was like, I'm yoke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, guys, one other thing I wanted to talk to you guys about that's outside of Charlotte Wilder being absolutely jacked on this podcast. I do now. my little I do my little bar workouts with my little three pound weights and I'm like, I am getting so strong. <laughs> hey, hey, bars no joke. Those tight movements, yeah. that'll kick your ass. Yeah. Just working on the hip mobility, you know, try, we, we, before we started this podcast, just so everybody knows, Mike's knees are hurting him and I am sitting here recording this podcast with a heating pad on my back and we are, the three of us are 33 years old and it feels like maybe we're a little too young for that, but you know what? Life comes no, at you fast. I, I was going to say, Charlotte, I'm proud of you in your bar workout and your three pound weights because you're either working on getting worse or you're working on getting better. Thank you so much. That's it. You, you never so stay the much. same. You never stay the same. Getting that hammer and chisel out and just tapping away a little bit every day. That's the secret I did 10 push-ups today, fellas. Yo, Damn. that's no joke. Like, now I got to do push-ups. People, people think pull-ups are the barometer. Don't do them right now. If Brandon, you can hit Brandon. a real good... Oh, God. Brandon, we can't see you. Like You're not in frame. <laughs> He's lying down on the ground. Right. Like How do we know you're just not down there having a good lay? <laughs> wow. In a bucket hat, no less. What were we saying? <laughs> <laughs> I you're, you're, you're doing great, buddy. You're doing great. Um, 
<laughs> We're so I proud of you. Guys, I wanted to float this by you because I thought it was pretty interesting. We all spend a lot of time covering college football. Charlotte, we enjoy getting to talk to you about college football all fall. And the Pac-12 is in a very interesting dilemma right now. I don't know if you guys have seen, the Pac-12 is now potentially flirting with Apple TV Plus as a potential landing spot for its college football rights deal. Their current TV deal runs out after next season, and the Big 12 recently just re-upped and signed a deal with ESPN and one other media outlet. I Oh, with ESPN and Fox. We know the Big 10 signed the monster deal. The SEC is taken care of. The ACC is in a long deal with ESPN. And the Pac-12 has kind of been odd man out. Charlotte, how does the notion of the Pac-12 on Apple TV Plus sound to you? Well, I think this has actually been floated for a little while now. I feel like I saw even last year some articles saying like this is a potential thing. I think um, of all the conferences, it would at this point it would make the most sense because I think this is a conference that is looking for a home that that has an identity but needs a media partner to really buy in and sell it and market it and be like, this is what you should be watching. Um, and I think that Apple right now is such a sexy property in terms of sports rights that to be the first anything to go to Apple, I think is probably a good idea. I, I think that it would make a lot of sense for the Pac-12 because I feel like so many of the, the future of so many of these rights deals, no matter what that ends up looking like with the, you know, old guard of media still being heavy hitters because they're going to be in these contracts are so long. Um, I think it's inevitable that this starts happening. And, and I, I don't think I think it's I, I I don't think it's as strange as it might initially sound to college football fans. I agree. Like I think this is something that actually could work because yeah. it's clean, streamlined, and because there should be decent value there. I know yes. uh Apple TV Plus just acquired all of the MLS package. That's going to start. It's a 10 year, two and a half billion dollar agreement with Major League yeah. Soccer. And I went and looked at the numbers just to see, like, all right, ballpark, what are we playing with? Because we know soccer is the biggest sport in the world. But in America, it's the NFL, college football, then the NBA, and then everything else. And yeah. going and looking it up, when you look at last year's ratings for the MLS finishing up on ABC and ESPN, their highest viewed games um, in 2022 had across ESPN or ABC and ESPN Deportes, 593,000 viewers, 591,000 viewers, 584,000 viewers. So decently, like good growth there. Part of ESPN's initiative with them was trying to help grow that as a media entity. When you look at the Pac-12 last year, and you go down the average viewership for each team in the conference. You've got Arizona State and dead last, averaging 314,000 viewers a week. You've got right behind them, Colorado, averaging 350. And then you get right up into the half a million range with Arizona Wildcats at 10. So your 10th wow. most popular brand is averaging almost as many viewers as the most watched MLS games that had a network backing in ABC on ESPN. So... I'd imagine there would be some value, even if maybe you're not having a bidding war with other partners, because it seems like the interest there has been pretty lukewarm. But I, I don't know. I think it's just crazy enough to work. Yeah, I feel like some there's something about the Pac-12 football brand that seems to work with the Apple TV Plus brand. Mm -hmm. if it's it feels synonymous in a, in a very weird, like uniform, sleek way. Like I don't know if it's that we're so East Coast out here, and the the West Coast is um, kind of up later or, or just always on. I'll say it like this: when Peacock made the home opener for Notre Dame, or NBC made the home opener on Notre Dame on Peacock, right? It was a huge deal, and it had a lot of Notre Dame fans handcuffed to having to figure out the streaming service of Peacock to be able to see that that home game versus Toledo or whatever the hell like that, that game was for that opener. In the same way, 
I feel like you're dealing with a lot of hardcore fans that love their Pac-12 football yep. and are scared to death that it's going to go away and it's already chipping away the way that USC and UCLA are, are leaving, that they could really tap into a market over there. And I think just the people on the West Coast are probably more geared to tapping into a streaming service to watch their football because they'll watch it any way they can get it. You're right, Brandon, and this is huge for the conference, right? You lost your two biggest brands. Everybody else is locked down. You're in a position of weakness right now relative to the other Power 5 conferences as conference realignment is always that scary specter looming in the distance. So you need something that looks like stability, especially if you're going to end up maybe in the position of trying to go out and recruit other schools to come over and be a part of your brand in the Pac-12. So there's certainly a ton of importance there. I also think, I mean, look, Apple's in California. It's a Pac-12. Like, I, that sounds yeah. crazy, but, like, it's Apple is a California institution. And I think that there is um, also something to be said for, I was initially going to say that as a joke. Be like, well, you know, Apple's from California. But, like, I actually think that it's <laughs> part of why this makes sense. And I think if you, if conference realignment is, as it has proven to be over the past few years, such a huge deal Who's to say that schools don't start wanting to join the Pac-12 because mm. they've got stability from the biggest media, the biggest, the most profitable company in the world? Like there is, there is, there is not the same, um, ooh, like the floor is lava feeling with that kind of backing that there can be with other rights deals when things aren't entirely you're not entirely sure where things are going to be and i've i think a few executives i've talked to you know have also said that sports are for any streaming service the biggest draw and that might sound obvious mm -hmm. but you would think a show um that is so wildly successful on a netflix or an apple tv plus or a hulu um that millions of people would be watching it at once but that's just not true like there is nothing that commands attention and there is nothing that will guarantee you like Notre Dame fans are going to figure out how to get a Peacock account. It's just how it's going to, and, and, and fans of the PAC 12 also, they're doing something interesting with um, the MLS where uh, season ticket holders get the service for free. Um, so if mm. you've bought tickets already, if you're a season ticket holder, which is around 400,000 people, those people get to watch MLS games on Apple TV for free. So if they do some sort of deal like that with the Pac-12, excuse me, with the Pac-12, where if you're already a season ticket holder, you don't have to pay extra for that already, that starts to look way more attractive. Yeah, it's why all these tech companies are getting into this, right? They just want your foot in the door because to your point, they've got the narcotic. We've seen this mm -hmm. with Amazon. The way, part of the way they're measuring success is how many new people have Amazon Prime accounts? How many new people are subscribing to get the rest of what we offer in our suite of products once they come for the sports side of things? And so doing that with Pac-12 fans, because for everyone else, the MLS uh, package is all inclusive and will be $99 for subscribers. Mm -hmm. The difference between that and the Peacock thing where you're getting one Notre Dame game a fall right now. And then you're getting, you know, on Peacock, you can also get the English Premier League, a bunch of other different things that they offer in there. But if you're a college football fan or you're a Notre Dame fan, it's a one and done type thing. I saw Alex Kirshner from Split Zone Duel point this out. If you've got it all in one place, that's a pretty good sell. Like, hey, if I'm a Pac-12 fan and I pay this flat fee... I get all True. the Pac-12 football games in one spot. I don't have to yep. go shopping around to a bunch of different places for this. It's not as hard to find as even something like the Pac-12 network was so long ago. It's, hey, I'm going to take this price up front, but I'm getting a pretty solid return on it with all of these things. I know there's conflicting thoughts and ideologies about streaming and using that as a gateway and putting sports behind a paywall, but... At the very least, there does seem like there'd be value in, I get not only all my team's games, but then the whole conference's games as opposed to just yeah. going there for a one-off. It also it also doesn't have the same potential for resentment as like, you know, you're making me sign up for one game a season or like you're making, it, it doesn't feel like a gimmick. It doesn't feel like a trick. 
um, which I think for building loyalty from viewers. And I just think that it's inevitable. I think no matter how you personally feel about streaming, this is the direction things seem to be going right now. And who knows what that becomes in the future. But um, it, if you can make that an attractive sell to fans, um, you know, inevitably, like that's, I think, more the direction things are going in. You have a chance to be early to market on something. Yeah. Right? If yeah. the world yeah. is going this way and the Amazons and Apples are going to be more a part of this, you've got a chance to be early to market. From Apple's side, this is probably going to be the most cost-effective buying into the space that you could have had, right? Yes. The SEC, the Big Ten, those are going to be too expensive for what I'd imagine they want to party with right now. But the Pac-12, who doesn't need to pay their member institutions $40, $50 million a year to show success and stability, might be more approachable financially for Apple, who's just starting to dip a toe into these waters. And thank you there, because I was about to say, these big companies like this, it's just, just it's always just the beginning. And the Pac-12 can be the beginning of the Big 12 being held there. Hell, sling to hold the Mac. Like, like yeah. the, the fact of uh, uh, any of these streaming services that are willing to pay to make sure everything is all in one spot, football fans are going to follow. Yeah, if you can make it easy to find and all in one place, then you've got a chance. Because even when I was at ESPN, you'd hear complaints from people that were trying to watch the Mac or some of the group of five conferences that are in the app that's sometimes difficult to sort through or difficult to find going through there. If you've got things readily available, if you make it important to that as, hey, this is our conference and we are behind them, the branding alone of being able to say the Pac-12 and Apple, like Charlotte said, one of the biggest brands in tech, the most profitable country on earth, or company on earth, that has the chance to be maybe the spin you need if you're the Pac-12 right now to feel a little bit better about your station in college football as you try and then sort out the football side of things now that your two biggest brands, you could argue, at least your one biggest brand in USC and UCLA leaving the conference for realignment. So very interesting to see the way the world is changing there. But that's just one of many questions that we've asked on this podcast. It's not the most important question like we asked Brandon right now, which is, Brandon, do you know what time it is? I had to work really hard to get to that segue. So that was unbelievable. You landed that plane, Mike. Sweaty. You did. <laughs> and I'm about to. I'm about to. <sighs> I'm about the Sully Sullenberger. This one. About to grind up on some zombies. <laughs> sometimes it lasts in love, but sometimes this, that, and the third. Sometimes it lasts in love, but sometimes this, that, and the third. <laughs> man, I'm not going to lie. I, I had my doubts going into that one, man. Adele's a tall order. That's a tall, tall order, man. That might be that might be one of the best I've heard live before, Brandon. <laughs> I loved that. I loved every minute of that. You did that justice. Oh, I also want to man. say that uh, waiting to see what song you picked is the best part of my week at this point. So, uh, thank you for delivering. Thank you, man. Thank you. Pressure thank burst you. Dot pipes or makes diamonds, and Brandon Newman giving Charlotte Wilder diamonds every Wednesday. How about that? Ooh. Oh, did you guys? Do you guys hear the nervous, the nervous shakes when I start saying, "I hate to turn up out of the boot when she switches to that." Oh, yeah, God, you gotta chase it. You gotta chase it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you were, man. you were running. You were running, but you yeah. caught up. <laughs> you start spitting there, man. <laughs> Adele starts spitting, and shit gets dangerous. If you thought Brandon Newman was spit, make sure you download, subscribe, rate, review, go Joe wherever you get your podcast. Leave us a five star rating and a review, and tell Brandon how great he did chasing down Adele in the open field. I'm sorry for stepping on you, Charlotte. Oh, no, not at all. Uh, I saw on one of the very kind reviews um, that someone said they would wear uh, sweatpants that said Gojo on the butt with Wilder Wednesdays down the side. So if DraftKings is listening, just tossing that out Get there. Get on that merch. The people are looking for merch. That's all I'm saying. Could be you. Also, uh, I'm going to practice Adele's accent. Adele. Ooh. Oh, I'm Adele in it, so I can do the Queen's English, and so I need to do Adele. We, so you got to You got to call Rich Paul from the other room. Rich, Rich, Rich. Oh, Rich said I couldn't cry, but here I am. <laughs>
<laughs> oh my god! Which I can't get emotional, but I think Which I'm gonna get a little bit emotional. Wins the call to LeBron's. <laughs> Oh my god. You know what? When you're downloading, subscribing, rating, and reviewing, uh, make sure you also spend some time telling Charlotte what a good job she's done with various varieties of English accents. Thank you uh, so much. Just tell um, me I'm doing yes, a good okay. job in general. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> At the Wilder Things on Twitter. Tell Charlotte she's doing great. Um, Thank you. Unfortunate Jeez. segue to someone who's not doing so great. Uh, let's get to this, Ooh. that, and the third. Three quick stories to end the day. Unfortunately, the Atlanta Hawks parting ways with their head coach, Nate McMillan, on Tuesday. Sources told Adrian Wojnarowski at ESPN, the Hawks have been struggling mightily this year. They're 29-30 and 30 at the All-Star break, eighth in the Eastern Conference, so technically in a playoff play-in spot right now, but things had been trending downward here. The, the Hawks, really ever since that Eastern Conference Finals appearance, had struggled to live up to what we thought that team under Trey Young might be becoming, and so now they're going to get a fresh start. Sorry, I just dropped the bottle cap. <laughs> but I tried. I hope no one would hear it. Um, I mean, I guess my – sure, right? Like, give it a try. I think I – without being in the building, anytime a coach is fired from a team that isn't obviously – that the coach has, there haven't been news stories about how egregiously the coach is behaving or that, you know, there's still an eighth, a 29 and 30 record. It's, I, I don't know, without being in the building and without being close to that team, it's hard for me to be like, yeah, that was the right move or yeah, it's definitely Nate's fault. Um, but I guess you try stuff. And I think that getting rid of the coach is also the fastest way for management and owners to signal to fan bases that they're trying to do something. And maybe that buys them a little bit of time, but I, I, I'm not sure. Yeah. He, he was on borrowed time anyways. I think when he got the interim tag dropped, I thought it was, you know, the Hawks doing the right thing by a guy that seemed to be the head of a run. Obviously the run was more Trey young and his ego and, you know, kind of beating that drum. But, Anytime you get a guy who's an interim that gets elevated, you know, it just feels like right. that's a short leash anyways. Yeah, uh, to Brandon's uh, statement there, Nate McMillan got elevated when Lloyd Pierce got fired in March of 21. The Hawks ended up going 27-11 down the stretch, nabbed the fifth seed, and then beat the Knicks and the 76ers before falling to Milwaukee in the Eastern Conference Finals. So maybe Atlanta is just thinking we can do this again. We're in shouting distance, and we can do the interim to an Eastern Conference Finals thing again. I was at the one game at the Garden that the Knicks got off from the the, the Knicks won. Oh, um, was that the Trey Young was, bow game? Yeah, oh. I was. I was there for the F Trey Young chance. It was it, and it was right after the pandemic. It was like the first time people had been able. I think we had like two months into having the vaccine and. I remember I high fived a stranger and it was like the greatest feeling. Like that was the most. And, and it's funny because I don't know that if this had been, I mean, it was the first time the Knicks had been in the playoffs in what, 10 years. And it was the first home right. game. It was like one of the most electric environments I've ever been in. And Trey young played his part. He, he played the villain. And so I think having been at that, I was more inclined. And then watching the run they went on, I was more inclined to be like, Oh, if they don't give, if they don't drop the interim, tag that's some bullshit um right but i guess that you know at a certain point yeah. the magic runs out a little bit mike mike can i derail for two seconds sure are you here to admit that madison square garden is more electric than td garden are you asking me i'm asking you miss boston maine <sighs> This is like one of the meanest things anybody's ever done to me live, I had to. not live, I had to. but like, um, <laughs> no, Brandon, no, it's two, they're two, it's like, it's apples and oranges. It's apples and oranges. TD Which Garden. Which one tastes better? <sighs> I'd say TD the apple, Garden, the big T apple usually tastes better. <sighs> oranges are sticky. You know, you got to wash your hands after you eat it. Honestly, the time it's taken deliberation tells me the answer and I tells me no, that no, Charlotte's so listen, just listen, looking listen, for listen, nice listen, things no, no, to no, say no, about no, TD no, Garden. No, 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 no. Look, you've 17 championships. Um, oh, my, my home, my home of my heart, sort of, 
I think Maine maybe more so. I um hey, hey, talking hey. myself into her. the the final being at the finals when the Celtics were in it <laughs> at the place where I grew up was unbelievable. Madison Square Garden though is is the is America's America's arena. Like the, it it mm. sucks that the Knicks suck. It is so awful that they suck because if that arena were allowed to like really rock, if we could have a finals oh, okay. in New York, I it like I'm sorry, I'm just saying the truth. Like you can't I'm just saying the truth. No, you are. And listen, the way Jalen Brunson's been balling out for them this year, we could yeah. get another playoff series there that has that kind of atmosphere. And as people that cover the sport generally, we are all better for that. When you get bing bong and shit going on outside of Madison Square Garden, the entire sports universe is a more complete place. Yes. Amen. Yes. When you get bing bong and you're bing you're you're about to <laughs> you're banging it charlotte i enjoyed watching you throughout all of that you trying to find the nice way to get td garden some love gave me big ancient aliens vibes so the aliens came down i am that guy i needed a wig for that one so apples and oranges see the thing about oranges are see, the thing about business ethics uh <laughs> let's get to that and get charlotte away from sweating it out for td garden oh. to some better news uh calvin johnson went on jim rome's show i don't think it's still called rome is burning anymore i just assume everything that jim no. rome does is called rome is burning uh but he went on whatever show jim rome does currently and actually said that he's excited to be around the detroit lions again he said during that interview, I'm excited really? to be around this team, just being around football and to allow my kids to see some of the things that I was able to do while I was in Detroit. Now, apparently the current Lions chief operating officer, Mike Disner, has been pretty instrumental in reaching out to Calvin Johnson and starting to mend some of the fences. For people that weren't aware, when Calvin Johnson retired pretty suddenly back in 2016, the Lions tried to and did successfully recoup about one and a half million dollars of his signing bonus as a part of that new deal, which is within their rights, but dumb as fuck when you're a billion dollar <laughs> business doing that to one of your franchise's most important players. And the bad oh, blood that's man. persisted since then has been an eyesore. And for a franchise that's always seemed to kind of had strained relationships for some with some of its former stars, Barry Sanders was also kind of in that strained relationship space for a while. That yeah. was stupid. And I'm glad that the current people in power there are smart enough to say, hey, we need to reach out and try and make this good because Calvin Johnson as a Hall of Famer is one of the best things that we've had in Lions football in the last two decades. And there hasn't been a lot of other good things to really hang our hat on. Yeah, how stupid can you be to have the one good thing to like try to make it hate you? Like to, to, to try to take some of its dignity. Because that's what by by doing that to Calvin Johnson, you think the Lions need one point five million? I mean, yeah, probably the Lions need all the help they can get. But yeah. to take that from your your one player who actually the the fact people use Calvin Johnson as like a reason Matt Stafford isn't as good as people say he is. They're like, well, they had, well, he had Calvin right. Johnson. Like, I think um, if you have that guy and you try to take some money away from him, it's just like. It's, Listen, I, I need that on a t-shirt. I need it's within their right, but it's dumb as fuck. Calvin Johnson, yeah, that was a great line. It's a great bar, 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 bar. Uh, Calvin Johnson is a a a bandwagon fan. That's what Calvin Johnson is. The Lions have turned it around, doing great things. Have a quarterback <laughs> that a quarterback and a and a head coach that he likes, and, and and some offensive coordinator, and there's good vibes around Detroit and in Detroit football, and they have a brand for finally. For finally, he they he couldn't name one slogan that they had while he was there, and now they're all about grit. Something that was right there in your effing face the entire time. Calvin Johnson is just sucking at the teat that will be Detroit Lions <laughs> winning the NFC North next year. Wow! Wow! Damn. Haven't heard someone come for Calvin Johnson in a long Me time neither. on this front. Just saying. He lost that celebrity game, and now I got to run five miles and eat a, a dozen of donuts. He ain't did nothing for me lately. That is true. Yeah. He was on Dancing with the Stars, too. Another former wide receiver. People forget. People forget. <laughs> People do forget. Thank you, Charlotte. 
People I also remember. forget that in 2016, the Lions were worth $1.7 billion. So they came after Calvin Johnson for 1% of their net worth to try and make that themselves feel better about that situation. Congratulations. <laughs> you played yourself. Nasty. 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 Uh, let's finish things off with the third. I said at the beginning of this podcast, I think there's an important sports archetype that exists in every Ooh. generation. And that is a player that is willing to go and do the business of changing their name. For our generation, it was the artist formerly known as Ron Artest, Meta World Peace, mm -hmm. all the names that he's enjoyed in the interim. What we have now in the modern world is former Cardinals wide receiver Robbie Anderson. And I say former not because he is no longer with the Cardinals, but because now he has legally changed his name again. Remember, last time on Dragon Ball Z, Robbie Anderson before 2022 had changed his name from R-O-B-B-Y Robbie to R-O-B-B-I-E Robbie and said that Which, was how he preferred it when it was spelled growing up. Let me stop you briefly. Definitely the right move. Continue. Great move. Yeah, don't hate that. No notes. Apparently, he didn't think so because now, according to recent social media posts, he has legally changed his name to Chosen. Chosen Anderson Jr. So, so <laughs> technically, though, he is not a junior anymore because he's the wide receiver formerly known as Robbie Anderson Jr., which I would assume is the name that came from his father or whoever named him who probably also hasn't changed is can you still be a junior if you change oh sorry he wasn't a junior i saw chosen r anderson it was his middle name i apologize i don't believe oh, there was but a that's Robbie a philosophical anderson. that's a philosophical Thank debate you. for another day anyway chosen anderson what are, you, what are you trying to be like a women's lifestyle blog from like 2012 Ooh, it does sound like a podcast that i would listen to now Chosen yeah, Anderson is. sounds like the the blog of a blonde woman wearing a big hat in 2015. Yeah. XOXO, Chosen Anderson. It's Christian Girl Fall a little bit is what it's giving. Christian. I was, yeah, so it, there's there's some there's certain Hampton vibes in it. As yeah. Well, like it screams like a nice all white party. Yeah. A Chosen Anderson yeah, does sure. sound like it could be a cocktail at a country club. <laughs> like a brandy alexander yeah i okay this reminds me that lebron james has chosen one on his back which throws me for an entire loop because I, I had forgiven him for a, a <laughs> wrong term sin but See, chosen anderson i i like that for robbie because because he's he's more of a he looks more of a chosen than than a robbie I'll say that. Okay. So his social media Mistake. pages now refer to him as Anderson R, comma, chosen. So <laughs> indicating that <laughs> I think that's his first name. Uh, Brandon, you bring up the LeBron thing. Like, I weirdly have, I think, more of an appreciation for that just because LeBron was sort of calling his shot and then made it. Like, he was the chosen True. one, and then he lived up to it. And chosen is also very different than chosen one. Like, anybody can be out here trying to get chose. There is only one oh, chosen amen. one. Chosen is starting to sound like a really weird word now that we've said it so many times. <laughs> chose? I'm trying Choosing. to get chose. We're trying to get chosen. Chosen, 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 chose. I'm choosing chosen for chewing on some fantasy football yeah i don't know okay. i think i mean look do whatever you want with your name but i think that we're actually overlooking the most important part of this which is he has gone back to the elementary school style of roll call wilder comma charlotte uh which might be the coolest thing i've seen an athlete do in a while man that's the new that's wave good. that we need to be on. Forget changing your yeah. name. Change the order of your last and first and have it red roll call style. And and mm. make sure there's a comma. Make sure Wilder, there's a comma, comma, Charlotte. And then sometimes say it wrong. Say Wilder just for fun. 
If you're also confused at this point about if chose is a word because we've said it so many times, we appreciate you making it this far in the podcast. As always, download, subscribe, rate, and review Gojo wherever you get your podcast. Leave us a five-star rating and a review and check us out on the DraftKings YouTube channel as well under the Gojo with Mike Golick Jr. tab. Make sure you're following Charlotte Wilder at the Wilder Things on social media for all fun updates about everything going on in her world. Thanks so much. We'll talk to you guys. Boom. Money in the bank.